Hey everyone, in this AP Chem series video, I'm going to show you how to write electron configurations using noble gas notation. First, remember that you can write electron configurations using the diagonal rule or an alpha diagram, and while they both work pretty well, what about if you have to do it for giant atoms like uranium? It's got 92 electrons. The whole configuration stretches from 1s2 all the way up to 6d1. It takes a really long time and gets super annoying. Is there a faster way? I'm asking the question because, of course, there is a faster way. It's called the noble gas notation. It saves you a lot of time. Electron configurations can be shortened using the symbols for noble gases, and those symbols represent chunks of the entire full electron configuration. For example, if you took the noble gas krypton Kr, you could put its symbol in these square brackets, and doing that is the exact same thing as writing Krypton's entire electron configuration, so it saves you from having to write 1s2 all the way up to 4p6. Here's the standard format for a noble gas notation. It looks something like this. First thing you see there are the square brackets. That's where your noble gas symbol is going to go. Following that noble gas symbol to get the configuration correct for the element you're trying to write, it's always going to be an s orbital. And the way you tell which s orbital, whether it's 2s or 7s, is to go by the element's row number. The last part of the configuration is simply the rest of it to get up to the proper electron count. Make sure you've taken a moment to write down some of these key ideas and the correct format. All we need now are a couple examples. Let's try to do the configuration for tantalum using the noble gas notation. Starting with the periodic table, I see that tantalum has 73 electrons. You can pause the video and try it yourself first if you feel like you get it. You will need a periodic table as you do this. All right, let's put this whole thing together. First thing I need is to go back to my periodic table. Here's tantalum again. Now here's my noble gas column. I can choose any of these. The smartest choice is the biggest noble gas you can choose, so it represents the largest chunk of tantalum's configuration, but it still has to be smaller than tantalum. If you're having trouble finding that, a nice easy way to do it is to count backwards from 73 until you hit the first noble gas. So counting backwards from 73, 72, this represents 71 through 57, 56, 55, the biggest noble gas that is still smaller than tantalum is xenon. It's got the atomic number 54, meaning if I put xenon's symbol in these square brackets, it's the same thing as writing the configuration for a giant set of 54 electrons. So that saves me a lot of time, but I still have some work to do because tantalum has 73 electrons and I've only accounted for 54 of them. My format tells me that following the noble gas symbol will always be an s orbital. I just have to tell which s by finding my element and seeing what row number it's in. Tantalum is in row 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, counting down from the top after xenons symbol will be 6s which can hold two electrons the hard part is now over you just have to fill out the rest of the configuration using your diagonal rule after the 6s orbitals are filled i can see the next ones i go to are the 4fs followed by the 5ds i can fill those out right away my f orbitals can hold 14 total electrons so far 54 56 70 electrons have been accounted for which means my 5ds only have to hold three electrons. Here's my final noble gas notation for tantalum. Let's do one more noble gas style electron configuration, this time for palladium. Why don't you pause the video and try it yourself first. So the first thing I need to do to complete this configuration is find it on the periodic table. There's PD, 46 electrons. Counting backwards from 46, the first noble gas I get to is Krypton Kr. That means if I put Kr in brackets, it saves me from having to write the configuration for Krypton's 36 electrons. Following Krypton's symbol will be an s orbital, and since palladium is in row 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it's going to be a 5s. I'll put two electrons in the 5s orbital, filling it up. My diagonal rule tells me after 5s, the next orbitals I fill are going to be the 4ds, which could hold a total of 10, but palladium only has 46 electrons that I have to account for. Krypton's 36 of them, plus these two means I've got 38 so far. 
meaning to get up to 46 total, I only need eight electrons in the 4D orbitals. Here's my final configuration for palladium. And that actually wraps it up for this video on noble gas notations. Thanks for watching and here's a brief summary.